What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about a technique called ducking. It may also be referred to as side chain. Um, probably more commonly you'll hear the term side chain compression, but we're not really going to be doing compression. We're just going to be doing some volume, which basically is, is why we call it ducking, because we're going to be ducking the volume of one insert track uh, under another one. In other words, we're going to be reducing the volume of one track based on the output of another track. Those of you who have seen my peak controller video where I use it to make the kick drum control the bass line, uh, this might be somewhat familiar to you. In that tutorial, what I did is I showed you how to use the peak controller so that every time the bass, uh, every time the kick drum hits, it activates the volume for the bass to play so that the bass will only play when the kick drum plays. And you can get an interesting effect out of that. And if you haven't seen that video, um, go look for it on, on uh, YouTube or Google Video or or at warbeats.com and, and check it out because I think it's interesting. But in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. Only we're not going to we're not going to mute out the sound. But what we're going to do is every time the kick drum hits, we're going to reduce the volume of the bass. And the reason why we're going to do that is because in this example we want the kick drum to come through very loud and clear. And that's something that's pretty common in, in dance-oriented music, where the kick drum helps keep the, the pounding rhythm, and you want that always to come through crisp and clean and clear. And I'm sure many of you have experienced where your songs sound real muddy in the low end, and this will help to uh, remove some of that mud. Not all of it, but some of it. So what we want to do is we want the kick drum to reduce the bass. So we're going to go to the kick drum channel and we'll select a Fruity Peak controller, which is right there. And we'll go to the bass channel. And what we're going to do is basically Every time the bass kicks, if you look over here where the fader is, I want to I want it to reduce like this. So if I hit the the kick drum, boom, boom, boom. See, I I I want to control this so that it decreases so that my kick comes in loud and clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and say link to controller. And then in the link to controller, I'm going to link it to the kick peak controller but I have to do one more thing and that's invert it so I click here on the mapping formula and go to invert it and now I have my formula now the reason why we want to invert it is because by default it would increase the volume and we want it to go in the other direction so invert will do that Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and play a kick drum on the keyboard, and you should see this volume decrease when I hit that kick. And you can see it did decrease, but you didn't hear the kick, and that's because I forgot to unmute the peak controller. This is important. Now let's try that again, and keep your eye right here on this fader. You can see, obviously, it's going down every time I hit the kick. But there's two things wrong right now. One is it's at full volume when the kick's not playing. And we may not want that. So the way we're going to fix that part of it is we're going to adjust the bass volume level right here. 
And let me move this closer to the fader so we can kind of see the cause and effect here. So as I move this up, you can see that the fader volume moves down. And I'm going to put it right there so that's the maximum volume that fader's ever going to have. Okay, but it's still, the second problem is it's going down all the way to zero, all the way to nothing. We don't really want that. We want it to go down some, but not all the way. So what we're going to do there is we're going to adjust the volume. So as I'm hitting the kick, I'm going to start reducing this volume knob till it goes down uh, about to here. In other words, about half the distance. So maybe like that. So now the maximum it'll be reduced is about halfway. So I think that's a pretty decent starting point. There are other controls, and if you've seen the peak control video I did previously, you'll know like the tension and, and, and the decay. We might actually want to adjust the decay a little bit. The decay is how fast it snaps back to its top position. you can see here it's got a little bit of a of a time lapse before it hits the top again but we can make it really go up quick or we can make it really slow look how slow it's going there that's with the decay all the way over to the left and it's still thinking about going up right here see it's barely moving that's definitely too too slow so this is going to take some tweaking but you're going to want to do this this tweaking when when the sounds are going simultaneously so i'm going to go ahead and play the the uh the bass line and uh and then i'm going to try tweaking the the decay and some of these see if see if i can get it sounding okay okay I think I was kind of getting off time with the with the with the baseline but whatever uh, so I've got it at a place where I think it's gonna be okay so let's play Let's play the whole thing together uh, with the full drum pattern and and the uh, and the bass. And hopefully you could see that bass was dancing opposite to the kick. So every time a kick comes, it go lower. And that's the effect that we want. And this way our kicks always sound clean without the bass line muddying up the low end when our kick hits. So those of you who need to know how to do, you know, how to get that cleaner bottom end sound, this is one way of helping you do that. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to show you was that you can use this for more than just the kick and the bass. It's I think it's most commonly used in that respect, especially for dance, hip hop type of music. But you can also use it to good effect with other instruments. You might have, for example, a couple of guitars, one playing a rhythm part and one playing a lead or a melody part. And when they're both playing simultaneously, they really muddy up the middle section, the middle registers because there's so much harmonics in like a distorted guitar sound, for example, that um, it just starts to sound like a solid, you know, wall of noise sometimes. So you might do the same effect with where the lead guitar will cause the rhythm guitars to duck out a little bit when it's playing. And that helps your lead to come through. But another area where this is useful is with regards to vocals. 
And what I'm going to do is just demonstrate how this might work and how this is actually used uh, in radio today. Um, I've got a peak controller right here. This is a, a second peak controller on my vocal track. And you can see here the peak is dancing along with my, uh, with my vocals. Now, what that's going to control is here on the full mix insert, which is I, what I did is I made all my instruments go to full mix first, and then they go routed to the master. But what I've done is I've put a, a balance effect here. And the only reason why I did that is because the balance has a volume knob that I can also automate. I could have done it with the fader, but I just wanted to show you a second way of doing it. And you can see as I talk, this volume is going down. And what I did is I basically right-clicked on it and linked it the exact same way that I did earlier with the kick and the bass. But now, what I can do, let me bring these up again. Now what I can do is I can play the full song and talk to you, and my voice is going to cut through better than if I didn't do this particular effect. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it without the effect, say something. Now I'm going to turn the effect on and say something so you can just compare how much clearer my voice comes through the mix. So we're going to start with it off. When you see this light go on here, that's when I've turned it on. So, so there you go. This is how you do side chain ducking. Um, in, the, in this example, I'm, I'm strictly controlling volume parameters. But you could control threshold going to a compressor, or ratio going to a compressor, or gain coming from a compressor if you wanted. You can, you can do... Uh, a million things with with FL Studio and its automation and a peak controller. You know you can use it to uh, to do uh, help you control filters. Um, who knows? I mean the possibilities are endless. But I have gotten a few requests for people wondering how to do the ducking side chain and helping their kicks come through, which is why I wanted to do this specific tutorial. So hopefully you'll use this to, uh, to your advantage in your production. And uh, this is NFX saying I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.